Should we go to this meeting? Yeah. Let me just get a snack first. Snack? I brought a snack. Oh, that's okay. I'm I'm good. I don't know. I got this. Told you I brought a snack. There's a better way to eat pickles on the go. Sucker Punch, the snack with a snap. Look at the number of participants who had a shot at this, who wanted to be one of 12 of 60-something thousand. thousand. I mean, that's impressive in and of itself. What a diverse group of drivers. What a diverse group of participants. Just really cool. They should all be very, very proud. around four platforms. I mean, I'm lucky to be here. We might have changed the game. We out here taking names. Let our voices rise. Let them reach the sky. We might have changed the game. We out here taking names. Let our voices rise. Let them reach the sky. Hey, Corey, Nick, Corey, Doc, give them the Mr. Determined. Right in the storm, I focus on rainbow connections like Kermit. The water on my shoulders, it was a burden. Now I don't notice it, everything turning. Everything shifting, doing it different. I'm floating, I'm drifting. Shout out the slums, round the world, we uplifted. Doing the big. We about to change the game. We out here taking names. Let our voices rise. Let them reach the sky. We about to change the game. We out here taking Every one of them deserves to be there. Celebrating the fact that they were here and a part of this very first ever Prodigy Week for Racing Prodigy, and what a three days it was. And here we go, they're gonna spray it. <laughs> now let's see if they've learned how to spray the champagne. It's time to close the books on the Prodigy Racing League Mazda MX-5 Cup Golden Ticket Series on Race Room, powered by Sucker Punch. We've already seen three drivers punch their way to Prodigy Week Part 2 to the Atlanta Motorsports Park, and today they'll be joined by one more driver, and in 43 days, the Prodigy Week action will all commence. Delighted you can join us here on RaceBot TV and on the Racing Prodigy YouTube channel. My name is Arjuna Kanki Party, and boy, what a semi-final showcase we saw. Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, one of the most underrated tracks in all of North America really brought the best out of these Mazda MX-5s and for 30 minutes of racing we're expecting that once again. We're joined alongside by Dara Thacker in the broadcast booth and Dara I've got to say those semi-finals I'm relatively new to the world of race room but I'm always amazed at just how well they can race side by side. Yeah, these guys, the MX-5s particularly, they are fantastic at side-by-side -side action. These guys have so much experience in them, uh, and you could see that so close side-by-side -side racing. They weren't exactly hitting each other. Great clean. Uh, only a couple of instances really through the 40 minutes of racing that we had, and some fantastic racing as well. So hopefully, 30 minutes of the final, going to run exactly the same way. And of course, on our way to Prodigy Week Part 2, we are delighted to welcome plenty of new supporters on our racing prodigy journey, helping us build this eat a real pipeline. And of course, starting with Sucker Punch, all natural pickle juice shooters for clean hydration, pickle chip pouches, perfect for those long sim racing sessions or days at the track, and the Jared Pickles with knockout flavor, the true champ of chomp. Now available 
in the U.S. Mazda Motorsports has partnered with Racing Prodigy to continue its mission of supporting race car drivers, enriching lives and developing the next prodigies. Mazda is supporting participants by providing $2,500 in coaching vouchers for the Racing Prodigy Coaching Marketplace. Aztec wheelbases with their revolutionary quick release system allows you to easily switch wheels with just a click. SimLab P1X Pro Sim Racing cockpits with unparalleled rigidity, functionality, and design are your perfect sim racing base. And Advanced Sim Racing, owned and operated by passionate sim racers, Advanced Sim Racing is the fastest growing North American sim racing chassis manufacturer and equipment retailer. We thank them all and so many more that help us on our way to Prodigy Week. A quick rundown of the starting grid though, as we get ready to go racing. Of course, all set through the Prodigy Zipper and the results from semi-finals one and two. It'll be Leandro Whirler, Philip Dreis on the front row, and then Jack Keithley, Turka Hakkinen behind them. Enzo Filippo and Martin Barnett share row three with Brandon Hawkins, the Canadian who fought his way forward, looking to dice his way from row four alongside Angelo Michel. Mitchy Geisler and Mateusz Tishkiewicz round out your top 10 with Nico Sonal and Farouk Uruai, 11th and 12th positions. Leonard Heidegger and then Sven de Vries share row seven with Nathan Maxim in 15th, David Nemchek 16th and Phil Cravey, Melvin Brandt 17th and 18th positions. Just a handful more, of course. Stan Vlistra, Frenek Sikorski, Frenek Pastor and then Guillaume Blanc Ferdinand Coglin and Oliver Burnt, 24 Mazda MX-5s, but only one Dara at the front of the field will walk away, or drive away, I should say, with a Prodigy Pass. They've had their chances so far this season, and this is the last one to win it on track, not really waiting for any kind of decision from the committees. And if you want to win it, you've got to do it now. 30 minutes of racing is going to be difficult. We've seen so many of these guys fighting hard in the semi-finals, uh, but now there's even more of them going to be vying over those top positions, and who really knows who's going to come out in front. Dreis um, is going to be a contender along with his fellow uh, Brazilian on the front row, but, you know, so much can happen in 30 minutes of racing. And of course, like you mentioned, the uh, Prodigy Search program, uh, drivers who are in the top 25% of the series points are eligible to win two additional, one of two additional Prodigy passes to be selected by the Search Selection Committee. That deadline is on Tuesday. So if you are in the top 25%, check your email for more details. But time to focus on track. 24 enter, one leaves with a Prodigy pass. It's time for the final on track action of the Prodigy Racing League Mazda MX-5 Cup Golden Ticket Series on Race Room, powered by Sucker Punch. And with 30 minutes of racing, how important will it be to lead side by side into the opening corner and a great jump to take us into the opening corner as it's going to be uh, not uh, your race leader, uh, uh, Philip Dreis, excuse me, that grabs the pole. Instead, he slots into second, waiting for the timing to update. He's changed his livery. That's what got me so confused for a second. He's in the orange MPI car, contact in through the keyhole. You can already see how aggressive they are on the opening lap. Uh, Dreis, perfect getaway. I did. I agree with you. I thought that was uh, Verla uh, taking the lead, but it is Philip Dreis, the German, who leads us down towards turn four for the first time. Uh, but look at Turk Hacken and him. We're on ball with him, uh, with Jack Keeley, uh, just or. Um yeah, just behind him. We'll have to see how Keith Lee can work his way through. But Hakkinen, he's trying to work his way up. That is a very late send, I think, on the inside. But I think it worked for battling through the field. And now Whirler's compromised slightly. He's offline. And now watch the drivers just slightly lose track of your leader. Although I've got to say they recognize that situation and Whirler able to slide and hold on to second spot. Single file, they'll rise and fall through this middle sector. You can see on the curbs, the Brazilian uh, Visceral Esports driver just really trying to hold on and as the tires come up to temperature as well expect the intensity to rise we're not focused now on the top 12 and just trying to stay where you are instead you've got to work your way forward you have to make sure you don't get separated because you already see slightly further back as we get ready to wind to the end of the opening lap starting to see some separations outside of the top 10. Yeah, very tight in that top 10, but further back, a couple of gaps starting to form, but they really are tight through the field. Nothing really more than half a second of a gap between two drivers through the field. Look at them all towards turn one. Dreis still leads, though. He didn't have the pole position, but it's no matter for him. He didn't have pole in race one, but he worked his way to the front and pulled away. Can he repeat the same feat? Going to be difficult with Verla uh, just behind him and the fact that he's got Keith Lee in P3 as well. They weren't in his semi-final, so he hasn't raced them yet this evening. Uh, uh, but he is racing them when it matters. And it's really, at the moment, those three for the win. But anyone can really have a go here. And I wonder, right, if those that broke away in their semi-final are going to settle in initially and think that, you know, we might have a pace advantage on those behind. Let's see if we can break away. Now, some of these drivers, of course, 
have been in multiple of our finals. We run down the back straightaway and you see Enzo Filip, our second back at Road America behind uh, Pro uh, Prodigy Pass winner Nikodem Wisniewski. He slots his way on forward to fifth, passes Martin Barna. And of course, we'll be trying to just chop and change his way on forward. You can see behind as well, the likes of Nico Sonal, Brandon Hawkin as well. Some leaning on one another in terms of the bumper to bumper contact us through the S's. They'll cycle out and really close stuff for some drivers trying to avoid losing too much more track position. They can't really afford to do it this early on as Michel working his way now towards Thunder Valley. No one really able to make moves apart from a little bit further back, as you could see. I think uh, that could be Maxwell uh, fighting, or Maximan, sorry, fighting away. I've made that mistake twice now uh, as Heidegger is fighting away. Let's see if he can make this move with David Nemchek side by side in towards the final corner. Face concentrating very much on the mid corner. Not the biggest Simrig that you've seen in the world, but if you're in your shed and you've got the, yourself dialed in, it doesn't really matter. He's racing for B14 at the moment. He needs to work his way up soon. He's not even using all the uh, entire width of his monitor, which is interesting to see. So clearly doesn't uh, find the need for all of that peripheral vision, even in the plenty of side-by-side -side action that we are going to see. I mean, you can see chopping and changing, juking left and right up into the braking zone. And it is a climb. So in that regard, you can maybe commit that just a little bit deeper. And I think that's what we're seeing on occasion here. Two by two, they'll sequence off and it's all just on the edge of the top 10. No real battling inside of your top five right now as uh, dry Swirler keeps Keithley, Hackenden, and Philip Howe all just run as they are. And a couple of cars just giving bumps to each other and trying to extend their margin to those behind. In fact, just as I say that, I saw a couple of drivers pull out of line. It's Whirler that for a moment had been removed from second place. You can see behind him leaning on one another, Jack Keithley trying to pass Durga Hackenden. Yeah, he's trying to defend the position because for a moment he had P2 uh, ahead of Verla, but he's just trying now to hang on to P3. It shows how quickly things can go backwards in an MX5 race. You're looking for P2 and all of a sudden you're defending your P3 position is on the inside. There's Turka Hakkinen. Of course, finished P3 at Brands Hatch just a couple of weeks ago. Doesn't really want to repeat the feat. Wants to go a little bit further forward, but he's got to get through quickly on Jack Keithley uh, as quickly as he can. But, you know, it's so difficult at the moment uh, with the field so close together especially for the action man Jack Keithley as he rolls his way out of the final corner to see the end of what will be the second lap. Now, of course, uh, as we see these drivers just build up the temperature in the tires, we've also got the point now where it's stabilized in terms of the balance of the car. And so you'll see them pitch the car around plenty. Weight transfer is so important in these MX-5 machines. And you can see not really a breakaway building right now. Front. Uh, 10 or so split by three or so seconds. Brandon Hawkin, one driver in particular that I'll just call attention to because uh, we saw him making some aggressive moves in his semi-final. Hasn't been able to really do that so far here in the opening five minutes of the race. As Michelle, you see him once again strapped into his seat, but he's falling back a little bit. He's down to P12 now, needs to really stop the bleeding and get his way back up the order right on the tail though uh p11 of i believe the dutchman uh that is as uh, they run down towards um turn four but look at them all trying to find the slipstream trying to find the line but michelle uh trying to find his way through at the moment so difficult at this stage he hasn't had the best of starts as you can see from the position changes but he can always move forward as they're side by side over the s's yeah but now at this point tiskovic in 10th position has lost around almost two seconds to nico sonal up the road these cars outside of your top 10 starting to be uh, dra uh, drawn out of the fight for a prodigy pass and as much as there's some great racing and i'm sure drivers will be trying to make their case to the uh, prodigy search se uh, selection committee and not necessarily going to be drivers in contention at the front of the field and that's why they're continuing to just be a little bit calmer more drama by the way for the likes of veal cravey for ferdinand coglin as they drop to the very back of the field and i think i can see why if this is what they're doing in the mid-pack dara imagine what they're doing further back in the field yeah, and it wasn't a good start as well for Guillaume Blanc, who I think had a, a spin out of keyhole just a couple of laps ago. We just about saw it on the edge of the screen, uh, but he's further back as well. So those three not with the best of starts, but really they weren't really that far up the order early on to start with. So not many position gains further back. You can see uh, up three for the man currently in P21. That is Oliver Burnt, who started right at the back of the field, but he's not really been able to make too much of an indent at this stage. But looking back up to the front, Philip Drives is leading the way, but he is just pulling the train with him I, I really can't see this um this being decided until the closing stages because these guys they're so close together as you mentioned before top 10 really less than four seconds splitting them uh, and you can't really see where it's going to come from 
And here they come, they're fanning out three abreast, and I think in some ways Jack Heathley doesn't want to wait. Leandro Whirler, bit of a shove to his rear bumper as well. He'll rejoin the track, but with Keithley sweeping around the outside, Turka Hakan are not going to be able to take advantage. But as much as we keep talking about patience, some drivers recognize time is winding down on their chance to make things happen on track. And because we're seeing the top five now almost with a second behind them, uh, Dara, I do feel as though Jack Keithley's the one that's going to be the main instigator up front. He is, but of course we saw him get overtaken by Verla at the closing stages of semi-final two. Uh, but it's roles reversed in the early stages of the final as Verla's now trying to defend his P4 position, or P3 I should say, as Turka Hakkinen looks to try and find a way through. And Enzo Filippo attaching himself uh, with a tow rope to the back of this top four. But, I mean, we're talking as if the race has just started. We're nearly a third of the way through already, so they really don't have that much time to get these moves done. Dreis is just going to hope that they keep behind because I don't think he's been overtaken tonight and he wants that to continue. We get the chance to chat to Leandro Whirler after his victory in semi-final two. We did get the chance, of course, to, to chat with Dreis and so uh, we got a, a, a bit of a sense of his mindset and he seemed pretty calm, pretty focused and, you know, things haven't necessarily all gone his way. Third at uh, Road America in the final. Of course, the unfortunate uh, technical DQ for him on incident points at Brands Hatch that saw him drop to the back. But he's definitely been a contender in terms of speed. The question is now going to be wheel to wheel. Can he make the right decisions at the right time? Especially since, like I was saying, I think Jack Heathley not wanting to hang around. He'll really force the issue. Long way around through China Beach and after starting in third for a moment had an overlap to send it up the inside. But as they rise to the top of the hill, Keithley has to back out of it. Single file once more. Yeah, magnificent defending there from the German Philipp Dreis, who was just trying to hold on to this lead. And we were talking about distractions earlier on in the semi-finals, but I can't see uh, how Jack Keithley's uh, wallpaper is not distracting him with some very interesting patterns uh, back there. I noticed that, and I thought I had to mention it because I can't take my eyes off it. But he's keeping his eyes very firmly uh, in front, but he might have to be careful because Verla's not far back either. Uh, he's right on the tail. Dreis is able to get away a little bit through the, uh, through the final sector. But then it's all closed back up again with the slipstream down to one, two, and four. And of course, for Williams Esports, it would be great for them to be able to send Jack Keasley on over to the Atlanta Motorsports Park. It's continuing in some ways the trend that we've seen here in this Prodigy Racing League Mazda MX-5 Cup Golden Ticket Series on race room powered by Sucker Punch, where of course Michael Romanidis, the Kawanda Esports driver, uh, earned his Prodigy pass by winning the overall championship, took the top position in all three rounds of the leaderboards. And then after that, uh, we've had the two Polish drivers, rounds one and two, Nikodem Wisniewski and uh, Kamil Pawlowski, who both, of course, have joined up with G2 Esports. And so it's uh, interesting just to see that, you know, we see so many people flock over, maybe not to their preferred platforms, but are just continuing to show their strong speed. And there'll be contenders once more as Keith Lee switches it back or forces the issue. Can't really get underneath under braking, but... Dara, he's trying stuff. I'm loving this. Every trick in the book, I think, is going to be used in the last 19 minutes of this race because he is looking very keen to get through here as Keith Lee Verla is hoping that, you know, he goes for a and I said that maybe a little bit too ambitious. Skittles the two of them wide, and Verla can just take the lead, but we're going to have to wait and see Dreis. He's a face of composure at the moment. He doesn't look phased, and we're going to have to see if that really changes over the next 18 minutes. I can't see it changing because he is so experienced in these machinery. Like I said before, in the semi-final screen, two-time reigning champion of the MX-5 Cup in the race room ranked championship. So he knows how to get it done, particularly in this machinery. And despite not winning in event one at Road America and event two at Brands Hatch, he has the best chance here at Mid-Ohio. And in the immortal words of David Bowie, not only is Philip Dreis under pressure, but Jack Keithley wants to dance. So off through the opening corner. And interesting, you can see as well, in some cars, your usage of curbs here at Mid-Ohio, of course, the, the, the most notable series that come and race here in the real world would be the likes of the NTT IndyCar series, uh, IMSA, of course, as well. But some of those cars don't take the curbs as well as these Mazda MX-5 machines can do. Now, what's happened behind? Oh, Turka Hakkinen's had a spill. One need racing car leads, one down in seventh. 
Yeah, and the man who finished P3 at Brands Hatch, it's not going well. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to repeat the feat this time around. He's disconnected now from this train, which has somewhat broken up. The top three look like they're getting away a touch. Enzo Filippo now in fourth. Got a lot of work to do to get himself back into the slipstream. But look at this around the outside comes Keatley. Can he make this one stick? Grice has been defending doggedly over the last five, ten minutes. But I think this is the chance for Keatley. They're still side by side through the S's. The inside line for Grice becomes the inside line for Keatley as they turn back left to rise over yet another crest. But Philip Dreis, I think, just about going to hold on. And what defence from the German driver. Nico Sonal's dropping down. Business picking up as we reach the halfway point in terms of incidents. And also for our race control team to sweep their way on through. For a moment, Keatley had another bit of an overlap. This is getting tense through 11 out of Thunder Valley. It's still a couple of cars up front. It started to shake back up once again it's going to be five maybe six or seven once we cycle things back out but didn't quite get the sense for what happened back there with turka hakkinen but all it's really done is i think let people know dara drivers know exactly what's on the line and that time is winding down like you said only a 30 minute race and we're nearly halfway through now and 50 minutes to go. Philip Dreis, he is going to be work, uh, watching his mirrors uh, constantly down these straights. You can see a little bit of a move early to the inside, a little bit earlier than you would normally go in a qualifying lap. But he's doing it to defend here from Keithley. You can see that he's under pressure. Keithley uh, really trying everything he can. Looks a little bit agitated uh, behind that wheel. He really is trying everything he can. Again, he gets close. He's just got to make that move stick. Not going to be close enough, I think, to really worry about Enzo Filippo behind. Uh, well, I thought for a second he would have to worry. And then, no, there comes the switchback from the Frenchman. He's really thinking about how he sets things up. And I like to see that really interesting racecraft on display. And I hope our judges are watching and taking notes about which drivers are making those right decisions. As mentioned, closed up behind. Brandon Hawking in the mix as well, but not Martin Barner. So five at the front and five different nationalities represented. You've got the German Dreis that leads. Uh, Jack Keithley out of the UK. Leandro Werler with the Brazilian contingent shouting Lango, Lango, Lango. The Frenchman Enzo Filippo and then Brandon Hawking out of ca Canada. It's what we love to see and why so many have flocked to this journey that the Prodigy Racing League is all about. The e to real to get those opportunities to make their way to the Atlanta Motorsports Park. Three continents represented in that top five, four in total in this race. It's great to see such an international field fighting for this final uh, prodigy pass, as you mentioned, to the Atlanta Motorsports Park. But Brandon Hawkin, he was the driver who made moves in these kind of trains in semi-final one. Could he be the one to try and unpick the locks of everybody in front of him to put himself into the first position to get that pass uh, to Atlanta? You could see up front, Dreis, he is using every defensive line you could think of and more than no one's ever seen before to keep this position uh, to Keithley behind. But Keithley, surely he's going to have to try and get this move done soon. I mean, he's trying his best, but Dreis is defending incredibly well. In some ways, I think the issue is that he closes, I think, sometimes too early. And so then he doesn't get the chance like he wants to, to cut back underneath. And he's forced time and time again to go the long way around. Almost dips two wheels off and into the grass there on the exit of turn four. But it's clear what he wants to do. Dries is wise to it. Doesn't want to give him that opportunity. Almost bumper to bumper there for second and third positions. You can see on the left, by the way, at least for a moment, chopping and changing. Not too much at the front of the field. Drivers basically where they started for the most part. And that's significant. It goes to what we were kind of saying in the semifinals. Uh, Dara, where if you don't finish well, yes, you just need to get to the top 12. But the lower down you finish, the less chance you have of actually being up there at the front. Yeah, and that's exactly the case. I mean, these guys, you know, they, they don't really want to be dropping further back as well by making a big mistake, not just because they'll lose out the chance uh, for the prodigy pass, but with that selection committee, if you make a big error uh, under pressure, it's not going to um, it's not going to be something you want to add to your CV, particularly in that regard. But Luciano Ver uh, Leandro Verla, sorry, um, going through the opening corner all over that exit curve. Felipe really starting to pressure him up towards turn two, wiping a little bit of sweat off of his brow there. But again, you can see Keatley coming through. Dreis's defense 
defensive lines down into turn four have been absolutely sublime so far, and they're going to have to continue to be for him to hold on to this lead. Now, Keith Lee tried to tur turn it early and get a good run off the corner, but Dre uh, Dreis was there, and that's now meant that Keith Lee's forced on the outside, and this is where I was saying, I think sometimes he's catching too early, sometimes, sometimes too soon. Uh, and rather sometimes too late. And so he's not really getting the chance to do what he wants. Is he getting a shove from behind? He's got the confidence to send it. Oh my goodness. Audaciousness on his side as well. They're three wide out of turn four. Behind them, Whirl and Filippo trying to join the fun as well. But still Keith Lee left on the outside, forcing the issue on the MPI machine of Philip Dries. Through the S's, not really a place to be side by side, but the race leader doesn't want to concede. A spot at Prodigy Week Park. Part two on the line and rolling through Thunder Valley. Keith Lee keeps his foot in it. And Dreis defended that line a few laps ago and it worked for him. But Keith Lee this time stuck it around the outside but can't quite find the line to have the inside into this final few corners. But look at Enzo Filippo. He's now trying to get past Furler uh, through the final couple of corners. There's a bit of a touch, a drift wide there for the Frenchman. And here comes Hawkins as well up the inside. What battling we are seeing at the front here. Philip Dreis is putting up what can only be described as a defensive masterclass here. I, I don't know how he's still in the lead. How Keith Lee isn't somehow in front is beyond me. Martin Barner is closing as well. So there's now six at the front and in contention. But with time ticking down, look at that train behind them as well. Hacken and Tiskovic, uh, Michelle, De Vries, Nemchek, Heidegger. Those are major contenders that have been uh, pretty strong in terms of pace. Are they going to be able to make uh, an opportunistic pass if anything was to happen at the front? Because lap after lap after lap, we go side by side. Surely something's going to go wrong. This time, does look as though Keith Lee's a little bit too far behind. And it does seem as though he's breathing quite heavily right now. He's working hard behind the wheel. He doesn't look terribly comfortable uh, at the moment behind his MX-5. We saw a brief shot of Dreis there just taking a sip of water. He looks calm and collected. Keith Lee, I mean, he is trying everything he can. Uh, if, he, if he can't win this race, then he can't really blame himself because he has thrown everything he can at Philip Dreis. We've still got 10 minutes 40 uh, plus the end of the lap that they are on. So we'll have to see if Keith Lee can find a way through whether Dreis will finally crack. But, I mean, this is some stunning race. Defense uh, from Philip Dreis at the top level. Um, and, and the guys behind, they are looking for a way through. But it's just such stubborn defense that they have no answer. And so far, in terms of our finals, we've not had repeat podium sitters. It's always been, of course, a new winner. The, the, the winner getting a prodigy pass, they don't return the next round. Uh, but uh, it, to, to have different drivers even outside of second and third. Leandro Whirl has been top five on both occasions. He's there once again. He's always in the mix, in the hunt, and that's what you need to do. Leave yourself in those good positions as we get to those final 10 minutes of this race. Now, a bit of separation between Whirler uh, and uh, Keith Lee for second and third, and so this will allow a little bit more of an opportunity for Keith Lee to set this up, to work on his exit out of this very important keyhole section. Drop away slightly as you get onto the power, but in these cars, not much really wheel spin to deal with you can just bring that momentum down onto the back straightaway and watch as bumper cars played between Filippo and Hawkin. It's going to be Keith Lee that closes and forced once again to look the long way around. I think Dries has realized where he wants to be and one more time wheel to wheel out of turn four. We're into those final five or six laps and now every single battle will matter. Keith Lee in front as they descend down out of the hill but out of turn six on the run in towards the S's. Dries still trying to hold alongside and my goodness the pass finally made is it done because here comes philip dries back up the inside can't quite find the line he looks like he's got a little bit more momentum here than jack keithley he is finally in the lead doesn't want to give it up very easily at all he saw how hard dries defended and how well he did and he's going to be thinking that he can do exactly the same philip dries though can't become complacent because verla will absolutely snatch the opportunity behind him if the german makes any sort of mistake and with this top six they are nose to tail pushing each other through some corners here this is going to come down right to the wire but Keith Lee he's now going to experience how to defend and what it's like to be watching the car behind you gain in the slipstream 
like you say, he hasn't really been in this position, has he? Whereas Dreis has absorbed all of that pressure and now has the chance to, to flip it and go on offense a little bit more. Look how tight they run to the top, though, of the keyhole, just trying to really defend that inside as much as possible. Whirler and Filippo are holding each other back in some ways. If they work together, they could take the, the offense to those up front that have been focused now on one another for so long. Look at that shot, though. It could be any one of these six that in 43 days' time is going to the Atlanta Motorsports Park to drive a Radical SR1 and to potentially get a real-world contract in the Prodigy Draft. Back to the outside, this time for Philip Dreis. Wheel-to-wheel, door-to-door contact, and as much as he'll try and hold his lows to the inside, Keith Lee will hold the lead for the time being, but it's behind. We're still side-by-side -side on the run to the S's. Yeah, these two, this is Hawkins trying to put his way up into P3. I said he might be the guy to unpick the lock. And at the moment, it looks like it's coming through around the outside goes the Canadian. Can he stick it there? I think Verla is going to have an inside line into Thunder Valley and just about hold it. They are banging uh, wheels, doors, everything into each other uh, as they race side by side. But Verla just about holds on. It gives Dreis a little bit of a, a little bit of wiggle room really in front to try and go after Keith Lee. Uh, maybe a bit of room for a mistake as well, but I don't think we're concerned about him making any of those. Verla, though, P3, he can see the lead. I mean, P6 can see the lead. They're so tightly packed. This is anyone's game with six minutes 50 to go. Whirlers, is, is he looking a little bit stressed right now? It's hard to read expressions sometimes from these drivers, but laps are running out right now. That is the cruel and harsh reality. Time running out to get it done on track. Uh, you don't necessarily want to leave it in the hands of the Prodigy, uh, Prodigy Selection Committee. Dries, look how committed that car was, pitching back driver's right as he tried to first chink to the inside, then back to the outside for the lead. Might have compromised him for a moment, but back into the draft. We've done this for how many laps and counting now? We're going to do it once more. Deja vu side by side into the braking zone at China Beach. But is Dries going to actually back out of it? He's being a lot more patient than we've seen on any so occasion so far. And I think a bit of recognition there, Dara, that it doesn't need to be the same move over and over. Contact, Keith Lee's in the grass and down to fifth. There was definite contact there between Dreis and Keithley. I think there was a, a bit of uh, front end to rear end there as Keithley is the one who comes off worse. Clearly not pleased uh, in that car and he's now trying to defend his P5 position inside line into Thunder Valley. He's going to hold that one and, and retake P5. But Philip Dreis, I mean, there's a little bit of contact there. I don't know um, what exactly happened. Others might see replays and uh, cast aspersions on it. But, I mean, the top four now, they're running away. Verla is in there. Hawkins is in there. Don't count him out. He's risen through the field fantastically in both semi and final. And Enzo Filippo, he's lurking in the top four as well. Well, how many laps to go? Five and a bit minutes. Lap times hovering at one minute 38, one minute 39, depending on how much you want to really fight. We're into those final four or five laps, that is for sure. And I'm, uh, I've got the, I've got the sense just looking there at uh, Jack Keithley. Some of those words definitely not suitable for broadcast. One more time though, out of this corner they'll dance. This time though, we're just four. And Dries now has a new contender to deal with. Somehow he's got to now figure out what Leandro Whirler wants to do. Where Brandon Hawkins going to place himself? And of course, don't forget the Frenchman Enzo Filippo is there as well. Already peeking out to driver's left hand side to the outside into the braking zone goes the Brazilian Leandro Whirler. All of Brazil has already cheered on Gustavo Ariel during a Prodigy Week event. They want to do the same with Whirler. Behind, also side by side for Hawking and Filippo, who bounce off of one another as the Frenchman goes the long way around. This is great stuff, but blink and look who's there. Jack Keith Lee's joined them in the draft once more. What an evening of racing we've had overall. I mean, we've had two 20-minute semi-finals where, you know, we had battles for P12 and battles for the lead. And here in the final with the Prodigy Pass on the line, the top four, five, six, seven, even the top eight now and the top nine, they're all closing into this battle. There's been so much fighting at the front uh, that it really anything could happen. Keith Lee is trying his hardest to pull himself back into that window. Uh, and if there's any more contact in front, he might be the one to take advantage next time. But as they dive their way through uh, towards the start finish line, I think we're going to have enough time to complete another two full laps, which means three more to go to see who gets that pass to Atlanta Motorsports Park. So 
pressure still on Philip Dreis, but he's absorbed it well. And it was a almighty pass from Jack Keithley to make his way forward. If he doesn't get it done on track, that's a move that's going to be clipped, put on social media, but also sent to the direction of all of our Prodigy, uh, Prodigy Search Selection Committee judges. For now, though, he's going to just get closer and closer and I think have to watch as Brandon Hawkin, the one that's going to get a good run on Leandro Werler. And there's that unique camera perspective from inside of the wheel. Eyes aren't blinking very much right now. That's the level of focus, the intensity that's needed. Whirler covers the inside, forces the Canadian, if he wants to get something done, to look the long way around. But only first position pays anything out. Brandon Hawking doesn't go for it. Two more laps to go after this one. He has a half-hearted look. I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Dara, who comes out on top when we get to the checkered flag? Oh, um, I'm I'm going to stick with Dreis. I mean, he's only been overtaken once here, and uh, and he nearly got the move uh, done completely without contact as well. I'm going to stick with Dreis, but don't count out Verla, don't count out Hawkins, but also a tip to everyone at home: don't get into a staring contest with Hawkins because you will absolutely lose, uh, judging by how long that he didn't blink there. But through they come into the final couple of corners. Philip Dreis, he does look so calm and collected. It doesn't seem like he's flustered too much at the moment, but he has two more laps to hold on to this one for that prodigy pass and of course let's not forget race control i'm sure taking a look at that incident and deciding if there is any requisite action needed here's a look on board with your race leader off the bumper cam to see the way these cars pitch on in you have to be so so committed as you roll through the corner just carry as much speed as possible and then onto the brakes in through the keyhole penultimate time of asking we've only got two more laps here folks Ladies and gentlemen, one of these drivers is going to the Atlanta Motorsports Park and we're about to find out. Look at how Whirler sets it up, but Hawkins sees it coming, tries to get to his inside, compromises maybe in some way the Brazilian. Everywhere you look, drivers having to make split-second, nanosecond decisions that will influence the course of this race. Outside line for the Brazilians, the Need Racing Machine covers as tight a line as possible. Only once has Dreis been passed around the outside and it took some confidence through turn four deep under the brakes for whirler he sticks his nose there bit of side-by-side -side contact once again dries gets shoved wide this time new race leader leandro whirler leads us into the s's another bit of a tap there for dries another tap as well and round goes keithley and dries they came together a few minutes ago and now they come together again they're both out of contention and they will not be getting the pass it's now verla and it is hawkins who are one and two in this race neither of them happy but hawkins he started the semi-final in p9 he's now got a shot at winning the final taking that pass but verla's not going to give it up easily and enzo filippo he's been lurking one lap to go. Could he take the pass? The top three, they're so close. It could be any of them. And I will just re-emphasize, Brandon Hawkin is locked in, I think, to the top 48 for next week's iRacing Golden Ticket Spec MX-5 Championship race. He'll get another chance. Drivers around him don't have that comfort. Whirler will lead us, but in maybe an uncomfortable position. A bit of a sitting duck. Dara, what do you do heading out of the keyhole here? Oh, I, I do not. There's a reason I'm sitting up here, Arjuna, and not racing on the racetrack. I think Verla just needs to get the best exit possible, defend that inside line, because that's the best opportunity you've got to try and hold this position. Hawkins hasn't led either race. He has sat in a race for 50 full minutes, not in the lead. It doesn't matter how long you lead, as long as you lead at the end. And could he do that? Down in towards turn four. He's looking inside, looking outside. He's not sure yet, but will he go outside? He will, and he's it around the outside. He tried, but he didn't want to force the issue. Brandon Hawking, the Canadian, gave it a good go, and you can see the wheel sawing back and forth as well. But Leandro Whirler placed his car where he needed to and is going to come out on top, you would think. Not going to get the chance through these final couple of corners because Filippo's putting the pressure onto Hawking. What a race. Mid-Ohio never disappoints, and this is what the Prodigy Racing League is all about, bringing those opportunities on the e to Rio pipeline Will there be one more opportunity for Hawking? He'll throw his car to the outside. Movado Corsa cheering on, sawing at the wheel back and forth. Oh my goodness. This is what this journey is all about. Leandro Whirler, take a bow, heading to the Atlanta Motorsports Park in 43 days time, winning in round number three of the Prodigy Racing League Mazda MX-5 Cup Golden Ticket Series on Raceroom, powered by Sucker Punch. And the relief 
has finally set in. It has, and what an ending to that race it was. And you can just see, it is just a face of relief. There's no other emotion. The bigs let out sigh uh, just tells you that... He's just pleased that he's got it over the line. It was so close at the end. There was a small mistake through Thunder Valley that allowed Hawkins another little look into the final couple of corners. But Lucy, um, but Verla, the Brazilian driver, he has won and he's got that pass and uh, fully deserved. Congratulations to him. But what a race that was. I was uh, standing up for those final couple of laps. That was amazing. He was fifth at Road America, fourth at Brands Hatch, and now a winner here at Mid-Ohio. Mid-Ohio. Brazil has another driver to cheer on, not just at Prodigy Week Part 2, but maybe in the Prodigy Draft as well, Leandro Werler, by a tenth of a second, coming out on top. Brandon Hawken, I mean, what a drive it was, and another ex exemplary drive from him. We saw him impressive in Prodigy Week, uh, the build-up to Prodigy Week Part 1. Uh, we'll see what the search selection committee has to say for him. Enzo Filippo, Martin Barna, and then Mateus Tishkovic round out your top five. Turka Hakkinen, Sven de Vries, and then Angelo Michel, Leonard Heidegger, and uh, Stan Vliestra, your top 10. Davin Emcek, and then Jack Keithley down in 12th. Nathan Maximin, and then uh, Brandt Sikorsky, Sonal Geisler, Uruai, and then the rest round out. Well, we'll take a breath, and I think a well-needed one. Of course, this is all about giving drivers that opportunity, and today, Dara, we really saw how much it means to those drivers. Yeah, that was some of the hardest racing I've seen in quite a long time. Every lap around the outside, down the inside at turn four, we saw somebody try it for the lead, and eventually Verla was the driver who it came off for. But what a what an evening of racing we had! Uh, well, over an hour of racing, and you never really knew where to look, who was going to come out on top, uh, and even right to the final couple of corners, Hawkins had that chance, didn't he, to try and take the pass off of Verla, but in the end, the Brazilian takes it and fully well deserved. What a race! And I think we are now being joined by our race winner and our Prodigy Pass winner, Leandro Werler. You are the winner of a Prodigy Pass. You're heading to the Atlanta Motorsports Park. Come on, tell us, what does this mean to you? Hello, guys. Yeah, thank you. I'm very, very happy, guys. Uh, this week I had a little problem in my eye, but this was my motivation for practice, practice and practice. I did eat a lot of hours this week and I won. I did my best lap in the quali and I, I did a good race and my pace was very good as well. Uh, thank you so much, my, my team, Visceral Sports, my friends from Sekai Team for, from Brazil. And thank you so much, guys, that, from Racing Prodigy. See you in Atlanta. I mean, you finished fifth at Road America in the final, fourth at Brands Hatch. Tell me, how confident were you feeling coming into this final chance on track to win it? Because let's be honest, this is a type of car where the racing's always going to be close. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in Brands Hatch, I, I did my, my, best, my best laps and I don't, uh, I don't, I can't uh, classify it, but now I, I am. <laughs> I mean. Let's talk a little bit then about what comes after this. You'll make your way to Atlanta Motorsports Park. You'll go through the journey that is Prodigy Week Part 2. And then we're hopefully building up to the Prodigy Draft where all the Prodigy Week drivers may be selected to race in the real world Prodigy Racing League as a paid professional racing driver. What would that mean to you? Yeah, I... Um... I am. Um, I, sorry, I don't speak English very well, but I'm very, very happy, and I, I can, I can enjoy, enjoy this opportunity, and I, I do my best. I think we're all going to have to learn a little bit of Portuguese because I know the Brazilian fans <laughs> are going to be watching come Prodigy, uh, Prodigy Week Part 2. Congratulations, Leandro. Can't wait to see you out there, Atlanta. Best of luck and go and enjoy your celebration. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm looking forward to seeing how he enjoys uh, the ups and downs of Prodigy Week Part 2. It's all going to start on Monday, uh, May 13th with the physical evaluation. And only after that, Will they get the fun parts of going out on track, doing some carding? Day two is when we break them out into the Radical SR1. It's a long way away, though. And while we've handed out another Prodigy Pass today, Dara, let's not forget 
is until Tuesday, the opportunity for the top 25 and the overall points in this Golden Ticket MX5 Cup Series to submit their nomination to the Prodigy Cert Selection Committee. And you, and you could really give a shout for a number of drivers, 10, 20 drivers, really, to get those passes. There were some fantastic performances all the way through the field. The likes of um, the likes of Enzo, Philip Dreis, of course, some say he should have won at Brands, maybe should have won here as well, but the contact at the end uh, puts him further down the order. Drivers that have shown some fantastic pace, but not quite got it done. But, I mean, some of the racing on show this evening was incredible. It shows why these guys are all fighting over a pass, and you could really argue that most of them deserve to get it. But sadly, only only two of them will. And you're no stranger to great uh, Mazda MX-5 Cup racing here on Race Room, and I think we definitely saw some pretty good stuff. And this is the final of our Race Room tournaments in the build-up to Prodigy Week Part 2, but that does not mean that there will not be more Race Room tournaments to come after that. So do make sure you're on social media, keeping an eye on us, and you can always head to racingprodigy.com, get your Race Room Game Pass, which will get you access to all Race Room tournaments for the next 12 months for just $14.99. As we wrap things up, though, Dara, we've got iRacing's tournament next week. Street Kart Racing still got some finals left that kick off in a couple of hours' time. But we're winding down on our road to, to Prodigy Week Part 2. We're getting those drivers all ticked off and knowing who's going to be there. It's an exciting time. What do you think the drivers are feeling right now as they get ready, they start packing their bags, and they prepare themselves mentally for what's to come? Well, it's exciting, isn't it? You're going into a new challenge, a new environment you've not really been in before, the chance to drive machinery that you've not really been with before. So it's going to be incredibly exciting for some of these guys that have qualified weeks ago. They'll have been counting down the days for quite a while now. But for the guys yet to qualify, it's going to be a very quick turnaround. You get the pass, and then all of a sudden you're off to Atlanta in a very short space of time. But for the guys at the moment, uh, the likes of Verla, Romanidis that have won them most recently, they're going to be incredibly excited about a month or six weeks or so to go until they get up themselves to America and yeah I'm sure they're looking forward to it. I'm jealous that I can't go uh, but there's a reason I'm here talking and not driving on track and of course don't forget to follow us on the Racing Prodigy YouTube channel for all of it for now it's time for us to say goodbye thank you so much for joining us across of this Prodigy Racing League Mazda MX-5 Cup Golden Ticket Series on Race Room powered by Sucker Punch it's been a blast we still have our search selection committees to go and you can catch them all on our YouTube for the entire team that's been a part of us behind the scenes, for our director, Hugo Luis, commentators, Joey Teppin's been along with us for the ride. Dara Thacker joining myself for our Juno Kanki party today. Can't wait to see you next time. Atlanta beckons, though, for Leandro Whirler. He'll be joining us for Prodigy Week Part 2 in 43 days' time.